Junior, once again, horsepower warehouse. I promised you guys I'd show you this thing. Check it out. It's not just a Shelby. This is a real deal super snake. 2007. You know me, I'm horsepower warehouse. I, if I have an exciting horsepower performance based car, I gotta share it with you guys. You, if you know me personally, you know I've been a Mustang guy for years. I've had a 2005 Celine with over a thousand horsepower so this is this is my kind of car here um of course you know the celine you know is based on a standard gt mustang whereas this is a gt 500 that is literally brought to the maximum so in 2007 you could actually purchase a gt 500 direct from ford and then have them send it directly to shelby where they could put on this monster package now this is even beyond just a standard super snake but this is a twenty-eight thousand dollar package at the time for them to take your already brand new top of the line gt500 and put on their super snake package well it comes with a lot i mean you are getting quite a bit for your twenty-eight thousand dollars and I'm going to rattle through all the options really quick on what you get here um, just because there is a tremendous amount. So the Super Snake hood obviously with the pins, the carbon fiber front fascia, the carbon fiber mirrors, the carbon fiber rockers, you have aluminum hood inserts for the grills, you have Shelby deck lettering in the rear, you have Super Snake badging on the front and rear fenders. You have optional 40th anniversary badging on the grill on this car. You have sequential taillights. You have matte black uh, striping, front and rear brake ducts, side scoops, quarter window scoops. You have a numbered dash piece, numbered engine plaque, numbered door sill plates, a light bar in the rear if it's a convertible super snake floor mats you have a, a billet engine kit you have a center cluster kit with all carbon fiber auto meter gauges um, aluminum shelby map light accent uh, door lock knobs or aluminum uh, just all sorts of aesthetic stuff but in addition to that for performance you have the coilover suspension you have the sway bar that's 700 plus horsepower sway bar i don't know why they call it that but they do borla cat back you have the supercharger system you have two options with the horsepower you could get a 600 or you can get the 725 package this of course has the kenny bell 725 package if you went with a 600 horsepower you would have had a ford racing supercharger and when you go with either of those you have it available in black or polished this also has the Ford Racing suspension that they did in conjunction with Eibach. It's got the Shelby slash Bayer Extreme 6 piston front and rear brakes. It's got a really, really gnarly uh, billet short throw shifter. This thing is the, probably one of the shortest six speed shifters that I've actually encountered. Um, it, cold air intake, 373 to 1 differential. And the 725 horsepower is also comes with a one-piece drive shaft. Cap it all off with these 20-inch Shelby Alcoa wheels and the Pirelli P0 is what comes factory, but this guy upgraded it to these Pilot Sport 4S Michelins. Whew, holy moly, that's a lot of stuff to put onto your already top-of-the-line GT500. But let me show you guys just some details here. I mean, the carbon fiber on the car is absolutely fantastic. I love the carbon side skirts carbon mirror caps carbon front splitter in the front really looks cool you'll notice this car has the k40 radar and anti-laser integrated into it it's kind of hidden that's probably the only thing that'll tip you off that it even has that system 
all the carbon looks great. If this were my car, I would probably just cap off the rear diffuser and carbon as well. I know that wasn't a factory Shelby available option, but with all the carbon going all the way around it, this car would look great with a carbon rear diffuser. You can see the numbered plates here. Let's take a seat and pull out this key so it doesn't ding at us. I mean, really, really cool um, carbon fiber autometer gauges. Like I said, with the shifter, let me show you guys the, I mean, it is so short. It is ridiculously short. It's got the GT500 Super Snake mats under it. It's got the white upgraded interior with Carroll Shelby in the headrest. GT500 Super Snake in the back. So let me go ahead and open up underneath the hood and I'll be right back with you guys. All right, now well, we're back. Let me show you guys exactly what they mean when they're talking about a billet engine upgrade kit. Every single cap is all billet. They have the Super Snake um, strut tower brace. Of course, the big old Kenny Bell supercharger here. It even says Super Snake on the supercharger pulley here. If you guys aren't familiar with this engine, this of course is a four valve. Um, this is more akin to what you would find in the Ford GT supercar of the era rather than your standard, you know, Mustang GT, which in this era would have had a three valve motor. So these things, you can see SBT, hand built with pride here, that has the signature of the two technicians that put it together. This is a 5.4 liter. But this engine as a package is really, really stout. Um, it, it goes so much further than you can just put a big supercharger on it, which of course this does have the big boy supercharger. But this thing is ready for a lot smaller of a pulley to really up the boost. Um, the 1,000 horsepower, I believe Shelby actually offers a 1,000 horsepower update kit at this point. I want to say this one is the 725 horsepower. Well, they say at least 725. So at the time, they, you know, I don't know if they could really disclose what it was truly making without getting into some trouble. Um, you know, remember this was back in 2008 when the equivalent Chevrolet Z06 was a 505 horsepower LS7. Um, so this thing was blowing the, the Z06 out of the water. Um, even the ZR1 of the era, uh, the 2009 ZR1 was 638 horsepower. So again, you know, you're talking about almost 100 less horsepower than this car is making. So really a fantastic package for a factory offered unit. And, and when I say factory, I mean Shelby, Shelby America. And he has all the receipts for this car, all the work that's been done. I mean beyond the $28,000 initial Super Snake package. This car has had every updates after that. Um, this one is just truly a representation of if you wanted to go all the way with one of these cars, you know, this is it. I really love this engine package. If it were mine, I would do very little stuff to this car. I would do the carbon fiber rear diffuser like I just told you guys. And I would maybe maybe start looking into a smaller supercharger pulley with like a Gates green belt. So I'm sure this doesn't slip, but I just am a stickler for the highest quality supercharger belts that I can get my hands on. I really like how it's got the k and filter with Kenny Bell in it. I mean, there's a lot of detail into this car that really you, you notice more and more as you go through and walk around it. It's, it's more than just a uh, a package that was converted. You could tell that this thing at no point in his life was a V6 Mustang. You know, this, I actually had a V6 car of this era as well. And this thing is just so far beyond, you know, what the standard car would be. Let me know what you guys think. I really am a fan of this package, obviously. You know, I'm, I'm known as the Mustang guy. I build a, a heck of a lot of Chevrolet products, but you know, this is, when I was a kid, this is what I spent all my money on. Super Snake Alcoa wheels are just absolutely incredible. I like how it says forged. Shelby, Super Snake. I would not change the wheels for anything. Really, really like them. 
happy that the guy put the high quality Michelin rubber on there rather than the Pirelli's. Uh, I'm not a fan of the P0 rubber. I had them on my Celine as well and the P0's were just, there's no way to get it to hook. There is no way. Even with these, now you're looking at a 295, 35, 20. You really have to respect this, this car in terms of throttle input because it will absolutely grenade those rear tires at a 40 mile an hour roll. You aren't just stabbing the throttle in this car. You have to roll into it. You have to respect the power. And now this isn't my car. I, I haven't raced this or really even driven this aggressively. Um, but I, I am familiar with what it's capable of doing. Like I said, my Celine was over a thousand horsepower and um, this is a fantastic car to for a street cruiser. I mean, what do you guys think below? Please comment. If you like reviews like this, rather than, I, I wanted to do a car review just because my channel is getting a little monotonous with my Corvette builds. I want to share something exciting and cool with you guys whenever it has the, whenever it pops through the shop. So I have a ZR1 in there. I've already shot a video on that. And I had this fantastic Mustang that man, I, I couldn't sell it and not have it on my channel first. So if you guys like reviews like this, please comment down below. And thank you guys so much for watching. But until next time, take care.